Hi, I'm Amber Johnson of Gigi's Thimble, and today I'm going to teach you how to turn this into this scrappy paper pieced quilt block. So what is paper piecing? Paper piecing is the method of stitching fabric onto different sections of paper to create a quilt block. The paper acts as a foundation to eliminate stretching and will ultimately be removed before the quilt is finished. The great thing about paper piecing is you stitch on the lines that are printed on the paper to give you a really exact finish. Most paper pieced quilt blocks have a wow factor and will make everyone else say, how did they do that? Here's a quick overview of how this is all going to work. First, we're gonna start with section A1 and continue sewing on fabric around the block, working on opposite sides of the block and going in number order. And I like to refer to the four slices as a round. And it's really fun to see the rounds come together with your different fabrics. We'll be sewing the fabric onto the wrong side of the paper and we'll be creasing the paper on the lines to help us know where to place our fabric. I like to call my method the grab and go method so that I don't have to pre-press or pre-cut my strips. I don't have to make space for all of the strips for the entire block to be laid out on my work table and I don't have to try to keep everything in order while I'm sewing. So it's just a quick grab and go method. And two final general tips for paper piecing. First, shorten your stitch length on your sewing machine to 1.5. That will help perforate the paper and make it easier to remove. And it will also help secure your stitches so they don't pull out when you remove the paper. And then my last tip, and this is just something you always do with paper piecing, is you're going to start stitching on the line a quarter inch before the line starts and you're going to extend your stitches a quarter inch after the line ends. Let me show you how it works. The first step in paper piecing is to crease the paper on the lines around section A1. Put a dab of glue in that section on the wrong side of the paper, the side without lines, and adhere the two and a quarter inch square centered over that section using the creases as guides. Cut two two inch wide strips of fabric to two and a quarter inch length. Just hold them above the square and roughly cut to the same length. Line up the long raw edge of one strip right sides together with the raw edge of fabric over section A2. Sandwich the paper and fabric between your hands and carefully flip everything over and place under the presser foot of your sewing machine. You are going to stitch on the line between section A1 and A2. Start stitching a quarter inch before the line and extend your stitches a quarter inch beyond the line. Pull everything out from under the presser foot and press the strip open. Repeat this step on section A3. Note, it's a good idea to lift the paper after you've flipped the sandwich and placed everything under the presser foot to make sure the fabric under it is laying flat. You can also sometimes feel if the fabric is folded under the presser foot. So try to pay attention so you don't have to unpick anything later. It's always a pain to unpick those tiny stitches. Step three. Clip threads on both sides of the block, the lined and the fabric sides. Step four, lay the lined side of the block face down on the mat and fold the paper and fabric up to crease the lines between sections A1 and A4 and section A1 and A5. Flip the block over so the fabric side of the block is face down on the mat. Step five, fold the paper back on the line between section A1 and A4 to expose the excess fabric. Note, you will have to pull the paper and the stitches apart a little bit every time you do this step to allow the paper and fabric to lay flat. Trim a quarter inch from the folded paper with your rotary cutter to leave your quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat this step on the line between section A1 and A5. Step six, cut two more two inch wide strips of fabric to two and a quarter inch length. Just hold them above the section A1 and roughly cut to the same length, plus a half an inch for the seam allowances. 
Line up the long raw edge of one strip, right sides together with the raw edge of fabric over section A4. Sandwich the paper and fabric between your hands and carefully flip everything over and place under the presser foot of your sewing machine as you did before in step two. You are going to stitch on the line between section A1 and A4. Remember to start stitching a quarter inch before the line and extend your stitches a quarter inch beyond the line. Pull everything out from under the presser foot and press the strip open. Repeat this step on section A5. Here's a little tip. For sections A6 through A45, you'll know you're working on the correct section if there are two sets of stitches intersecting it. If there are no stitches intersecting it, then you're probably out one round of sections too far. Step seven, repeat steps four, five, and six for sections A6 and A7 by clipping threads, creasing lines, trimming excess fabric, leaving your quarter inch seam allowance, cutting strips, just measure the longest length of those sections plus a half an inch, stitching strips and pressing them open. Repeat those steps again for sections A8 and A9. Step eight, continue working your way around the block in the same manner. Once you get further away from the block center, you can crease and trim all four sections in a round at the same time. Then stitch and press those four sections before moving on to the next round. Feel free to just trim those pesky threads after each round. You really only need to trim them from the lined side of the block because they'll get trimmed on the fabric side when you trim excess fabric, leaving the seam allowances. Step nine, after you've completed all 57 sections, congratulate yourself. Then trim the block leaving a quarter inch seam allowance from the outer square on the lined side of the block. Step 10, when you've completed making all of the blocks, carefully remove the paper from each section. Use tweezers and a spritz of water if needed. Be gentle and try not to stretch the fabric. Step 11, sew the blocks together as desired. 